Thank you to JD and to Alana and everyone who is associated with this. I'm really thrilled to be here. Could I have the lights down, please, for the, for the images? Thank you. Jim Bray and I have a long history of um, education and working with art, sci art and earth science issues with college students, uh, first, first to second year college students. Uh, for many years, we would bring our students into each other's labs or studios. We uh, took students to Italy three times and talked about art and earth science issues. Uh, but, but the most recent thing that we've done is producing a show of art and earth science disasters in many cases, some the result of um, f features, factors like uh, volcanology, sometimes uh, earthquake, flood, um, any number of, um, uh, of events that uh, sometimes are controlled by human beings and sometimes are not. But men, in many cases, um, these, uh, these disasters were um, something that brought us together in terms of education, and it's something that we can use to reach students, still currently me. Um, uh, I still teach at UW-Fox and I work with students. And I can break art have a greater uh, meaning for my students when I combine it with subjects such as earth science. This painting here, many of these paintings for our show Layers, Places in Peril, focus on a number of places that we find uh, to be treasures in one way or another in the world and that have been affected or may be affected by disaster. In this case, this is Seattle, uh, Tacoma, and Mount Rainier and offers a kind of variety pack of potential disaster. There is Mount Rainier there, uh, tsunami possibility, um, and um, uh, um, also earthquake. This is a, just a shot showing me working on this in order to show you a sense of scale in this place. One of the things that um, uh, I wanted to mention about Jim Bray and I teaching and the kinds of things that we try to engage in with students is to engage the students in subjects that have a relationship to them in the world. Subjects that in and of themselves have merit, have value. Painting, the history of painting is long and it's rich. Um, the history of earth science, um, of course, is meaningful in many ways. Um, in my case, though, painting can uh, sometimes uh, encourage a sense of uh, aloneness or a, and a sense of isolation, and one wonders what purpose it may serve in today's world. What Jim and I found with students, um, whether we uh, took them to Italy and showed them the maw of uh, Mount Vesuvius, um, or um, I took students into Jim's lab where he had whipped up an actual seven-foot tornado in the lab and I had my students draw it. Um, these students became aware of potential disasters in their world, such as tornadoes and volcanoes and earthquakes. But that connection with students and that inspiration at a, lo at a low level, at a young level like that, 18, 19-year-old students, um, and encouraging them to engage in the world and engage in their subjects in a new and meaningful way is one of our goals. Sorry, I thought this was going. When Jim and I would create these pieces, and I do say Jim and I both created them, I'm the painter, um, Jim is the earth scientist, but we did not do this independently. We would often travel to these places, sometimes that was independent, but we would talk about these places. I would learn about earth science issues and disastrous possibilities from Jim. Um, we would talk about, I would talk about the art with him, the art that might be in danger. And yet um, Jim and I both would inform each other in terms of creating the pieces and the resulting text panels as well with, uh, as we work together. 
Um, one of the things that's uh, very important about this particular show, Layers, Places in Peril, is that the paintings are, so, are uh, 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 applied to the wall or attached to the wall with text panels that have Jim's writing about that particular disaster. So one doesn't look at just the painting of Seattle and Tacoma and Mount Rainier. One also reads the text panel in which Jim describes these p potential uh, hazards, these potential disasters. Um, one of the things that Jim would do is talk to me about particulars, um, particular factors and features about earth science. In one situation, uh, as I was working on this painting, he drew in my sketchbook and explained to me about uh, various processes, about the subduction zone and about volca volcanism and the volcanic process. Um, and in this, you see, um, you, know, you can see these things, a little pointer there, this little diagram for a volcano and the subduction zone here, and this reference to the Juan de Fuca plate. But he would draw that in my sketchbook and suggest that I put that on there. Our goal is to try to make the education complete, both to students and to gallery owners or gallery um, uh, viewers who would, uh, would come and see the show. As part of our training um, uh, of, of young students, we three times took, took them to Italy. Art and earth science in Italy uh, included a number of cities that would, that um, uh, historic value, uh, art historical value, but also with earth science value. And one of those cities was Florence. And at the time uh, that Jim and I went to, went to Florence with students, he described the 1966 devastating flood uh, in the Arno, of the Arno River. Several years later, as we were working on layers, I decided to go back, and in 2012, I mapped the extension and uh, or extensive damage of that flood, which destroyed numerous documents, works of art. Uh, some of those objects are still damaged today. Um, and I decided to walk along the path of that flood with, with Jim's guidance to find out where the water had been and to make small paintings, small watercolor paintings, um, and then apply those paintings to a drawn map of Florence that shows um, just how devastating that damage had been, how devastating that, um, that particular disaster was. Of course, this is something that is a disaster, not just to one city or to those who lost their lives, but a disaster for the world in that those things um, are, are affected forever. If you look at the image on the top, you see some feet. That's Dante's feet. And this was high above me, so high above me. And it was at that point that the water was in 1966. So that's one example. These images are placed in areas close to um, the, the water damage and, and uh, where that flood affected um, the city. Here are some other little details of that area. Jim came to Florence as I was working on all of this. And here we are, he came about a week, as I had been in there a week, making these paintings on location at, at various sites. Um, and here we're talking about the Arno, we're talking about the flood um, and the potential for uh, potential damage um, from flooding there um, and in, in other areas as well. And here are two, uh, two of the slides, or two of the, the small paintings. They're about this big, okay. Um, and one of them shows a plaque. There are these very modest plaques all over the city uh, showing the level of water that had occurred on that November um, uh, terrible time. And you see below a, a woman pointing up. That's how high that water was. So she's pointing to the plaque. That's uh, Celeste Lehrer, by the way. That's Jim's wife, who was um, also visiting. And here is Jim looking over at the Arno. He is ever suspicious uh, about the level of that river. Another disaster uh, that happened in 79, year 79, and has the potential to occur again is Mount Vesuvius. 
Um, and that entire volc volcanic region, the um, Campi Flegre, Solfatara, um, that, but that entire region is heavily populated in Italy, Naples and, and, this, and the like. Very, very um, huge percentage of people with very little place to go um, if they needed to get out quickly. In this painting, which is 84 inches by 84, uh, you see that there is um, a map. I drew an, a, a kind of aerial version of a map of that entire region over the top. And that's essentially how um, I developed that painting and pulled it together. Um, and in this painting, it says much, I think, the most clear, uh, in the most clear fashion, the way that we combined our efforts in putting uh, together this business. Because in addition to Jim's text, again, he would speak to me and, and suggest things as I put these things together. So in this case, I was strongly influenced by the beautiful frescoes in, uh, in Pompeii and that are now um, very much on display in Naples Archaeological Museum. Uh, beautiful, high value color. Um, and uh, the figuration in them is uh, stunning. The certain, you know, there's a great deal of realism and, um, and so forth in them. But Jim is the one who would come, as I worked on this painting, and say, you know what? You need to put in more, more fumaroles. You need to put in that steam that comes from Solfaterra. You need to put in that, bub that bubbling mud um, and references to pyroclastic flow. And this is the kind of thing that, as a painter um, alone in the studio, I wouldn't necessarily have included. I may have made references to that beautiful presence of Mount Vesuvius, but not necessarily understanding what, what pyroclastic flow was or how to depict that in a painting, uh, much less um, uh, notions such as, or images such as the steam from those fumaroles. Another, uh, another suggestion from Jim is to include La Pili, and that's the the ash that falls, let's see, this stuff here, almost like rain um, falling in pebble, very kind of sometimes large pebble um, uh, shapes onto, um, onto this figure that I incorporated into the piece. This is an invented figure that is, rep represents both um, human life lost, but also um, references art that was lost at that time, so the, the kind of Roman sculpture at that time. And also in this detail, you see a cat in the corner. You see it in the right-hand corner. And it's sleeping. And will we awaken? Will that cat awaken in time to alert its owners to get out before Vesuvius goes again and creates another disaster? One of the things that I did, um, and, and I do this as, a, as an instructor, because I am an instructor um, pretty much first and then a painter um, as um, uh, a way to uh, really discuss some of the things that interest me. But one of the things that I find very helpful with, with students and that I think important is showing students how to work with um, um, art, how to work with earth science. Um, and so in taking students to Italy, we were able to show them both the best earth science and the best uh, kind of art they can imagine. Um, but it also is helpful um, to show them how to actually make a painting. I tend to use pretty traditional methods in painting. I feel that it still has uh, great value. The, I use mostly oil painting, but also watercolor and some acrylic. But I, I, I find that the, um, uh, the, the teaching of students and showing them traditional kinds of methods and still incorporating new ways of of making art and new, new ideas to um, make art about is uh, absolutely essential. This. So I can't speed this up, is that right? I was gonna do that with the mouse, but I can't do that. This lasts about five minutes. This actually shows um, a month's worth of painting, so hours and hours of painting and then it, it's distilled down. Uh, Chris Kissling uh, on my campus made this in, into a five minute film to show how I put the painting together. This shows you um, an outline of the map and that large circle in the center there, that's Vesuvius, it's representing that. And then adding particular parts. 
the, the show Layers, Places in Peril opened, there were 13 places that we had in this show, 13 various kinds of places, including New Orleans, New York, St. Louis, um, ideas including volcanism, earthquakes, a flood, um, a hurricane, all a manner of disaster. Um, and in these, all of these places, Jim's text accompanied the paintings. We um, had uh, students come in and look at these paintings. I've talked about these paintings with young, uh, young children as well as my college students. Um, and it opened in Wisconsin a year ago. It is currently on display um, at the Indiana University Museum, um, or I'm sorry, Indiana University of Pennsylvania Museum in Indiana, Pennsylvania. And you can see that I'm using a very traditional um, uh, process, layering both um, ideas in, uh, in all of these paintings that, is, uh, that are both um, uh, literally one stacked on top of another, liter layering ideas of time, layering ideas of earth science and art, layering ideas that include both warnings of disaster but also um, uh, um, a kind of poetry that we have come to expect in art and, and love about art. And, and it goes on for a few minutes. But thank you very much. <laughs>